a sutta study class and we are reading from this book social and communal harmony by bhikkhu bodhi and we have gotten through a large amount of it or rather venerable chanda has and we are now in the section called establishing an equitable society Let's change the gallery so until everybody's in. Okay. Okay, so um, just to remind everyone, this is a sutta discussion. So you're most welcome to ask questions, have um, any reflections that you have, um, ans and, and any answers you have to questions that other people have i.e. I am just the host. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yep, it's, it's a discussion. But we'll begin with just a little bit of being quiet and settling our mind because I'm sure you've had a busy week. Just to bring ourselves a little bit back to back to this world and giving our mind a bit of a break and a bit of space. Just allowing yourself to settle into your seat, settle into your room, and settle into your body and mind. Noticing what's going on. Letting yourself relax. Letting go of the busyness of the week. Putting it aside for now. And just being with your body and mind. open and receptive.
ready to hear the words of the Buddha. When you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. All right, so that was nice. We could have continued like that. <laughs> but we are going on to even better things, which is the word of the Buddha and wisdom that is, will help us um, find peace and clarity in our lives. Because this section is is uh, about karma and karma is how we what we is our heritage it's our um what's the word karma sakomi karma yoni karma bandhu karma patisarino it's i am born of my karma abide by my karma uh by my karma by its, uh, what's the word? I can't remember the party translation. But basically, we are the owners of our karma. What we do and how we act is the is we are the owners of it. Yes, I think the exact English translation. But you know the party. Okay, so this is this. Uh, we're on now page one eighty seven, and last week we spent. Uh, a good long time on the first four, four lines of this verse. But we are going to continue um, uh, at, at the end of page 187. I, I will just read that previous little, little bit again. So there's a little bit of context to what we are um, about to get into. Okay, so the uh, conversation here is between King Pasenadi, who has recently been defeated in a war against King Ajatasattu. King Ajatasattu is the bad guy in, in, uh, in Buddhist history because he, was, he murdered his own father to gain the throne. And King Pasenadi is a good friend of the Sasana, or a good friend of the Buddha. And, he, has, and he, uh, he's, he was a great benefactor of the uh, uh, Sangha. And he often had conversations with the Buddha. And this is one such conversation after he has recently been defeated in war. So monks, monastics, King Ajatasattu of Magadha, has evil friends. King Pasenadi of Kosala has good friends. Yet for this day, King Pasenadi, having been defeated, will sleep badly tonight. And the Buddha says, victory breeds enmity. The defeated one sleeps badly. The peaceful one sleeps at ease, having abandoned victory and defeat. So that's where we stopped last week. And we talked at length about a peaceful one is one who has abandoned victory and defeat. On a later occasion, when, when Pasenadi 
defeated Ajata Sattu, the Blessed One said, The fool thinks fortune is on his side so long as his evil does not ripen. But when the evil ripens, the fool incurs suffering. The killer begets a killer, one who conquers a conqueror. The abuser begets abuse, the reviler one who reviles. Thus, by the unfolding of karma, the plunderer is plundered. I read that verse again because it is so good. The fool thinks fortune is on his side so long as his evil does not ripen. But when the evil ripens, the fool incurs suffering. The killer begets a killer, one who conquers a conqueror. The abuser begets abuse. The reviler, one who reviles. Thus, by the unfolding of Kamma, the plunderer is plundered. Okay, so I this is just a fantastic verse because the fool thinks fortune is on his side so long as his evil does not ripen. How often are there fools in this world? For example, prime ministers. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, <laughs> but uh, but uh, people who are successful in having, you know, cheated a little bit here and there. As long as you're not found out, you think, great, I got away with it. But this is not how the um, the universe functions. It's just that karma has not ripened yet. It's not that you got away with it. You didn't have, you didn't get away with having, you know, cheated on your taxes. It seems, like, oh, well, great. Or uh, taken something that nobody found out about from the office, you know, maybe even a little bit of money that went on uh, through, uh, didn't go through the books properly, just kind of slid down the side. Nobody quite knows about it. But you think, oh, well, I didn't get found out. It's all right. But uh, this, is, this is the fallacy of our human mind. Just because the result isn't immediate, we think it's never going to happen. And so we continue to, think, continue to do unwholesome deeds because we just haven't seen the immediate results. Um, but when we know the Dhamma, we know that you get found out eventually. Even if you don't get found out, your conscience, you, your conscience holds all these things in the back of them, back of your mind. And it bothers you. It bothers you, even though you, you think it's not bothering you, but it accumulates. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, a wonderful thing to know that you do not get away with, 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 um, you do not get away with your actions. Okay, Liz, Liz raised her hand. Um, please, yeah. please go ahead. Liz mm -hmm. disappeared. Please may I ask it on, please? Yeah. You know, I was thinking about these verses this afternoon yeah. because I've been scammed. And uh, I was at the police station mm -hmm. uh, reporting all that and so on. And um, uh, I spoke to a woman there and she said, you don't look hungry. Uh, hungry. Uh, angry. And I said, why should I be? 
I, 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 I thought maybe I should explain. Mm-hmm. And she looked at me like, oh, yeah, there are people like that. But inside, I was thinking about these guys. Yes, they have scammed me. Uh, and yes, uh, I spent all my afternoon trying to sort things out. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I wasn't feeling resentful at all. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking, you are such idiots. Because now you've got that more to add on the on the bill, mm-hmm. and that more that Kama is going to dish out at some point. Mm-hmm. You bunch of idiots, you know. And um, yeah, I felt calm, and that's because of these verses, you know. I um, it, it um, kind of gave me the space to mm-hmm. to to you know sort of. Um, uh, look at my mind and say, you know, don't go down that path of, well, you know, people like that. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. You know, these people are in fact fools and they are going to have a lot of problems later on because they've scammed me, but they must have scammed a lot of other people with the mm-hmm. uh, an exception for me. So I was quite calm and, um, you yeah. know, uh, I'm going back to the police station tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It, it's okay. It's okay. And you can sort of step back when you've got that in mind, you right. know. Yeah. Right. Mm. Useful verses. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. It stops us from having to feel we need to somehow take revenge or um, sort that person out. I mean, it's of course good to clear the situation and express your, uh, do whatever you can to bring justice, but we don't have to be the upholders of karma and um, punish that person. I'm not sure, what do people think? Well, me, I felt this afternoon, I felt I had to go to the police and they are going to obviously inquire and so on to stop them, to stop them from scamming other people yeah. and also stop them making any more bad karma. Yeah, yeah. That, that's important. We are not just uh, sitting ducks in that situation, yeah. you know, but uh, it wasn't in the spirit of revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's important, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Shirley, you had something to say. Shirley, may I ask you to move, please? When I was reading the second verse, I sort of had a... I think I understood it maybe not quite in the way it's meant. Um, I think there's so much violence in the world, so much... um, so so much... um, What's the word? War. War's going on, of conflicts. And... uh, Usually when one nation um, Mm. invades another and is cruel to another, Mm -hmm. often that revenge thing Mm. that Liz very beautifully put, she let go of, very often it's perpetuated. Mm -hmm. But also, Mm. um, I mean, this is what's so sad about Gaza because I think Israel Mm. wants to get rid of Hamas but I think the, the people are suffering so much. You know, you could sort of almost understand that they want to take revenge. And it's actually, it's, it, it's, it doesn't seem to me to be the way of addressing terrorism to actually meet it with, with violence. I, I mean, I may be wrong. Um, but certainly uh, when I did social work, quite often people who abused either emotionally or sexually or physically um, children in their care they were often you know the perpetrators um were originally victims Mm -hmm. and it's sort of passed down Mm -hmm. and i think it's just i mean there aren't any answers to that i mean liz has embodied that in her action you know in her response Mm -hmm. to being scammed Mm -hmm. but what is it that makes some people Mm -hmm. uh who are victims of horrendous situation Mm -hmm. maybe they're 
maybe a relative, a dear one's been murdered and they uh, say, my life's been ruined, that person's only been in prison, my life's totally ruined. But others actually try and help and they use their grief to mm-hmm. try and um do something to alleviate the situation mm-hmm. maybe there was one lady i know whose um partner was killed by schizophrenic some time ago she she founded a mental health charity rather than hate them and it's mm-hmm. just what 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 is it uh that can let people yes. just let go of this cycle of yes. violence because it's not just that the perpetrator receives the um, the bad karma; it's that the victim can some can all. I mean, we don't know whether they that's the receipt of their karma or not. But the victim can be brutalized and actually then enact further further violence, mm-hmm. and it takes a certain amount of. I don't know what to be able to actually let that that go. Mm. It's just, I mean, it's just an observation that uh, came to me. Um, I don't know whether anybody's got any thoughts or comments on that. I don't think there are any answers. Yeah. But um, yeah, compassion and wisdom. Somebody's but but where is it that you get the compassion and wisdom? Because when you're hurting, it's very hard to be wise and compassionate. Uh, yeah, perhaps you have to have practiced it a lot in the past. And then yes, yes. Yeah. Maybe it's the little drops that we do practice. They add up when the, mm. something major happens. We're kind of like surprised. Oh, my goodness. I have the capacity, like Liz, go to the police station and not be angry. Mm. I remember you- a long time ago, I had my purse stolen when I was from the... And I suppose it was because I was at work and it, I... I think I knew who probably took it. It was some 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 teenage lad stole nicked my purse, and uh, I just felt yeah. I just felt poor poor young guy. Really, I didn't feel angry. Right, but right. that was sort of that wasn't so much. I mean, I was a Buddhist then. I think that was as much my professional training as my as my um right right my dharma training. I don't know, but yeah. I, I did have that reaction. You yeah. know, I wasn't angry with him. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think for my for me sometimes when you recognize those same qualities in yourself and see your own humanity and how um how uh, vulnerable we are as human beings how easily we are swayed by our 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 minds you know then you have you have a you have an understanding of of other human beings and you you're a little softer yeah gunther yeah just a general comment um the killer begets a killer one who conquers a conqueror yeah mm-hmm. these are negative things mm-hmm. i'm missing a little bit to say the one who helps others Later, oh. when he needs help, oh. we'll get people who help him. The man who gives, let's say, money to uh, whatever, yeah, will yeah. get it someone else when he needs yeah. it. I yeah. think uh, that is missing somehow. <laughs> that somehow is why in the past, I think Buddhism was this pessimistic thing. Right. But you can formulate it in a more positive way. Right, right. And I'm sure we've all had experience of that. They kind of go like... You know, people are so helpful, but but it's also maybe something we've done in the past that's coming back to us. Yeah. Uh, oh, you raised your hand again. No, you didn't raise your hand again. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I think one of the problems with... Uh, Uh, our minds is that we don't see the immediate result of doing something bad. In fact, sometimes there might be a little bit of satisfaction of having gotten gotten away with it or, uh, you know, um, having achieved something. Yes, I managed to, whatever it is. So it's because there's no some because karma is a little the, the result is a little bit delayed we perpetuate our bad actions. But there is what is, you know, some some karmic actions have immediate results, like 
Ditta Dhamma Vedanya Kama. You tell when your mind becomes more subtle and a little bit uh, more uh, uh, more refined, you do start to feel the result of your actions. You have said something wrong and you go like, oh God, I feel so bad about that. Or um, you, you won an argument, but something deep inside of you says that doesn't feel quite right. <laughs> so just to become more sensitive to the com immediate karmic repercussions of doing unwholesome things, because there is, there is that subtlety of mind that can recognize unwholesome and wholesome actions just as you are doing them and just as the, the karma ripens immediately. Is, do, do, do people find that or not always? Sometimes you feel it, sometimes you don't. But for me, quite often I go like, yeah, doesn't feel quite right. That was a bit of an ego trip. Uh, yeah, Liz. Liz, may I ask a down note, please? Yeah, you know, I agree with you when you say that, but I think it's because we become more sensitive mm -hmm. as we meditate and so on. Because me, when I started meditating, I was thinking, oh, aren't I good now? And after about two, three years, I was thinking, I'm getting worse. I'm worse than ever. Oh my God, what is that doing to me? And in fact, looking in, I thought, no, 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 that's not the case. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm more sensitive to, to the things which uh, before I would have ignored. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that, that's very important because otherwise you, you get discouraged, you know. And I remember, I think it was Biku and Alayo in one of his books mm -hmm. uh, who was speaking about that as well, you know, when he started meditating and finding that he was getting worse by the day. And I was reading that and I said, I know what's going on. And he yeah. said exactly the same thing that he, <laughs> it's just I became more sensitive. And yeah. uh, and then, and as well, you look for karma, whereas before you didn't. Do you know, I mean, me before I became a Buddhist, uh, uh, but now, I keep my eyes open. I think, ah, oh, yes, that's coming back to me. If it's a good thing, I'm thinking, oh, that's lovely. Uh, sometimes I think, yeah, well, that will be short. <laughs> uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's important. I think you, your antennae yeah. are more uh, sharp to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, we also have a tendency to notice anything wrong that we did. We don't tend to remember the good karma that we made. We tend to remember the bad karma that we made. So I think that's something for me, for us to look out for, you know, um, that fault finding mind uh, has a new home. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh, yes, Wait, there's someone here and then there's, yeah, Christine. Uh, Christine, Christine uh, may I ask you almost, please? Okay, I'm muted. Um, I feel that sometimes with comma, uh, it's a double-sided coin. So when you know about it, mm -hmm. it's somehow relieving in the sense that if you are a victim of someone's behavior or action, it's we, we, we those who, who know about comma would say, oh, Kamma will find a way to treat that person eventually. Mm. Um, however, on the other hand, in, in terms of what you mentioned about delay or not delay, mm. I feel that it's it's more complex, much more complex than that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think we choose that route of getting away with it mm. because we have experienced instances where you know, we have followed the rules. We've done everything we could. Mm. Like from a personal experience, I just experienced that. Um, I am very, I'm a strickler when it comes to driving. Mm -hmm. And then once I go out of home and I find that someone hit my car and oh. I don't know who. Oh. And, you know, the first thing that came to mind was, why? I followed the rules. 
you know, I let people pass and I let people overtake me. And then I get this. Mm. Although I do remember that way back, 20 years back, <laughs> I think I did scratch a few cars myself when I had just started driving and, mm -hmm. you know, I just shook it off and I said, well, mm -hmm. it was a time when you don't have CCTV, CCTV cameras in the roads, not like today. Mm -hmm. So, however, yeah, still, um, I I feel it works in such a complex way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it ends up being like a, an accounts balance sheet in our mind. Mm -hmm. But mm. it doesn't work like that. Mm. So it's not a question of, yeah. okay, I've I've done this right, this right, this right. That's right. Now I got this. Oh, you know, it, it doesn't yeah. add up the yeah. way that our logical mind thinks. Yeah. Uh, so I feel it's good to know that it is sort of a law at the background going on. Yeah. But then sort of, yeah. Okay, yeah. take it as it is and not try to, because we just can't control it. Right, right, right. Actually, that verse, um, you know, a fool, uh, a killer begets a killer, a conqueror, a conquers, a conqueror, a conqueror, one who conquers a walker. Anyway, this kind of one to one relationship is not entirely, it's not accurate. It's a kind of simplification of karma is an, complex network that the Buddha said that we could we cannot you know our minds cannot fathom exactly how this network operates so there are multiple multiple causes and conditions that got your car hit <laughs> hit on the side we can't say we can't say exactly you know what those causes and conditions were but there are multiple yeah um, so yeah, I think Chi had something to say. Um, I should, just uh, as we're discussing this, I remember uh, being a student when I was about twenty in university, uh, and just uh, trying to have a more consistent kind of <laughs> meditation. Mm. Just uh, not having any positive results from meditation but having mm. uh, practicing out of faith then I was kind of mm. you know we'd have a lecture for an hour then now uh, between the breaks when people are talking I uh, think okay let me meditate for 15 minutes mm. even though there's noise but you know there was this sense of I don't know if this is going to lead to anyone I don't I don't know if this is going yeah. to help in the long yeah, term yeah, yeah, yeah. but also yeah I remember you know having this clear uh, yeah. <laughs> uncertainty about whether this is because there was no immediate results, whether this is going yeah. to have any results and yeah. what kind of results. Yeah. Yeah. Or just doing it out of faith. Out of faith. Yes. And then now, now you know, uh, I, I kind of look at my mind and I realize there's more, much more positive mind states mm. than I ever mm. thought was possible for me. Mm. Mm. Then I think, oh, was it possibly because of last fifteen minutes? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, people would be looking at me strangely. Yeah. Why is she just there sitting yeah. across like that with eyes closed? This right. strange hippie, and also <laughs> me too. I was feeling strange. This is going to lead to anyone? Right, right. But right. it's it's hard right. to know if it did have an yeah. impact. But but I, I suspect you know um, you don't end up having much more positive mind states from nothing either. Right, so right. I, I, yeah. yeah. I, I, I have that experience of yes. thinking there's no immediate result. Is it going to get anywhere? Right, Is it going right, to do right, anywhere? Right. Now also right. looking and uh, thinking yeah. maybe it did. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to Ivy Baker the other day. The, unfortunately, sometimes we do a practice and it's not until five years later you realize, oh, that wasn't very helpful for me so it works both ways for 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 good and for bad mm. yeah A zoom user so for zoom, zoom user may I ask you to unmute please hello hello yeah my sorry i don't think my name is at the bottom i'm not very good with zoom <laughs> Sorry. Yes, you can rename yourself. Just um, yeah. right click uh, and, 
Yeah. I'm not quite sure how to do that, to be honest, at the moment. So I'll have to, but I'm Lee. My name okay. is Lee. So, so I was just thinking about it. And I think to the, listening to what was said, I, I often think, you know, we're in samsara, aren't we? Mm-hmm. So that's like the condition that we're in. So whether an action that we have an intention, whether we, is it the karma of a packer, which is the response that we get back from the world, as opposed to the karma, which is the intention action. Yes, yes. So when I think, when I perform, mm. if, and I, I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure, I'm going to perform very unskillful actions because I don't have a purified mind, mm. right? Mm-hmm. So when I perform an unskillful action or an unwholesome action, mm. I, like you were saying, I'm aware that it's happening, mm. you know, some. And when other people, it's often sometimes easier, isn't it, to be angry with another human mm. and to also assume that, you know, if I, mm. as a person, I had a very, very virtuous period in my life, you know, for, and, and then I was still getting like these sort of negative things arising because this is sort of pre Buddhist and I wasn't thinking about us all being in samsara. Then I became quite rebellious, you know, because I was kind of going, well, what's the point in being? this really genuinely not quite you know I'd studied philosophy for virtuous person because actually it doesn't really matter <laughs> so one of the things that I find helpful about the Buddha's teaching is that one we're in samsara two we don't know what the consequences of our actions will be or what, what's going to happen to us but I think also when we're doing something so say for example somebody steals something or like you know Lady was saying earlier, rips you off. That person is in the logic of that world. So if you're in the logic of stealing, in the logic of the world of stealing, you're not going to sit down. It's very unlikely. I mean, you might do because the world's very, very varied, but it's unlikely you're going to sit down and meditate. You know, you're that the karma is that you're not actually probably open to the possibility that we need to get out of samsara. <laughs> you know, that's you know, if we want to release ourselves from suffering mm-hmm. and Otherwise, we're constantly trying to, and even with virtuous actions, we're just trying to, you know, bolster up the nice sensual experiences we might get. You know, I got a nice holiday because I was really generous. You know, I was really lovely to people. So and I asked lots of really good questions. So I became really clever. You know, like, you know, all of that's they're lovely, but they will ultimately be, you know, yeah. that, you know, you might ask a silly question one day and then people thought you were smart and then they realised you were stupid or their perceptions of you and all, you know, all that's going to shift about. So I think right. the, yeah. for me, I think the fundamental thing about it was, you know, it is going to be I when I'm performing mm. wholesome actions or wholesome actions and attaching to those mm. as a person, as a being. Mm. I am going to inherit the karma of that because I'm not going to be going beyond karma mm. because I'm in the logic of mm. attaching to those mm. wanting a result or not wanting a result. Mm. That's, mm. So I, I don't know if that's helpful if other people are thinking the similar vein or, or not. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's very, very wise, very... the profound and that's the the gift of the buddha to Mm -hmm. there is a way out of karma there is an end of karma and that is the beauty and the uniqueness of the buddha's teaching Mm -hmm. because you can be reborn in the most uh, refined planes of existence where you Eat bliss, they say, for aeons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds <Maybe>. nice. <laughs> it's very tempting. I'll practice, you know, follow the teaching so I can go into a deva realm. You know, it's <laughs> gone through my mind before, you know, because it's what because there's an attachment to the sensuality, you know. Right. For me, as a bit. Yeah, even better than the deva realms are these Brahma realms. Brahma, where Brahma. You, where you don't even have a body, and you all you just do is feel endless amounts of loving kindness aeon after aeon after aeon yeah sounds nice <laughs> sounds nice <laughs> but uh, uh, the buddha saw uh, the the limitation of that as well mm. so yeah thank you for bringing that to mind that come uh, we are still as long as we are in the realm of um come uh, you will always fall down from heaven. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes. Anyone have anything else to say? Uh, any other comments? It's, uh, yeah. I also know that I've done many foolish things, you know, <laughs> especially when I was younger. <laughs> so I also have this thing of uh, waiting for that karma to ripen. Oh gosh. <laughs> You know, the Buddha also talks about you can you can um dilute your karma. That's how you that's how you a, get you know not have to worry so much like, about like, those terrible Mala, things. Is this yeah. ugly Mala, he kind of sees how ignorant he was. Yeah. And he also becomes aware that As, it's going to have results and he tries to Diluted somehow in the life. Well, he 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 diluted in a big way because he saw through non-self. He yeah. he became a stream winner. That's when you seriously dilute your karma. Yeah, it was like blessing pregnant women who are about. Yeah, to do yeah, life. yeah. That's after. That's after he became a well enlightened being. <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's, yeah, I can relate to uh, knowing the bad things you've done in the past yeah. and. Uh, Sitting on the edge, <laughs> knowing that the impending oh, yeah. doom and results will like, come to fruition at any oh, But seriously, it, it's yeah. called you know the simile of the lump of salt. Yeah. That if you're the so the karma that you have done that is bad can be compared to a a a, a lump of salt. So if you put that, if you don't do much about your mind, that lump of salt is goes into a cup. And that cup is a very salty cup of water because you have not you have not um, um, cultivated your mind. But if that lump of salt goes into the ocean, the the water in the Ganges, the water in the Ganges hardly feel feels salty. And that water is in the Ganges is actually love the the a mind that is wise and compassionate it's a mind of loving kindness actually this is this is what the similar refer, simile refers to but yeah all those unwholesome actions which not only in this life the ones that we know about we have done infinite good and part bad karma that can ripen under any conditions which we have no little control over but the uh diluting of the salt is cultivating your mind not just winding around conditions but cultivating your mind that is able to be open and expansive and not um, affected by the salt in the salt in the ganges yeah a mind that understands non-self really Okay. And any other? No, like, is there more mundane things? Like, for example, let's say, you know, you, you, I mean, this is a true example. Something yeah. I regret is when I was younger, I used to fight with my sister a lot to kind of slap each other, you know, get into big fights. So, you know, it's, you yeah. know, it's really unwholesome. Sisters shouldn't be treating sisters like that but you know this is when you're young and the kind of thing what, what can I do about it now uh, uh, to you know, mm. yeah 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 like, well the Buddha yeah. also talks about when you realize you 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 say ah I have done something uh, unwholesome let me not repeat it mm -hmm. from now on I will not act in that unwholesome way that is actually changing your karma as well for example, I have stolen in the past. I've hurt in the past. I will uh, um, not continue this bad habit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, let's say if you are, I mean, could you, is it too much to also kind of try to do the opposite? Let's say you've been right. stealing, but because yeah. you've been stealing so much, you think that means yeah. give a lot. Does that, is, is that going a bit too far? To kind of manipulate your karma. I think if it generates wholesome qualities, not with the ambition of, of uh, diluting, diluting karma, karma mm -hmm. but to generate the wholesome qualities, the joy of giving, that is what is freeing. 
Mm. Ja. Hmm. Any other comments or, or questions or no? <laughs> Okay. All right. Oh, hello, Lee again. We can't hear you. You have to unmute. Thank you for helping with the unmute. <laughs> One of the things, this is really helpful for me, this group, so thank you. And I, I do listen to a lot, and I mean a lot of Dharma talks, and I do wow. read the suitors, so, you know. My, my Personally, I'm very much aware that I don't always have very wholesome actions mm. because I've got some quite unfortunate habits as a as a being yes. you know and so what I'm quite in, I'm very interested in this talk about karma and mm. also its relationship to meditation mm. because I've noticed and I have had some help with this I feel from the Buddhist community with love and kindness because I do think if you share merit say I do think that you can feel that warmth you know that you've got that that people you know, you might have done something or said something not quite right. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can, from there, you can then, um, you know, meditate. So that loving kindness, the wholesome karma, mm -hmm. I think the whole point may be for generating wholesome karma and wholesome, warmer, loving mind states mm -hmm. enables the meditation so that we can release and release and release. It's really hard, I think, for me to release if I've done something bad or if I'm calling up to mind something unnecessarily that might have happened like five years ago mm -hmm. you know, even if even if I've been unkind in my mind a little bit mm -hmm. like so like yesterday <laughs> on the bus I was on the bus yesterday and there was a couple of people in front of me and I found them very irritating you know these two people they were not they were not unkind or anything and actually normally I'm often quite patient person but in that moment I just felt really irritated by these two people and I was aware I'm like you know these are really irritating me that that wasn't enough to say disturb a meditation because I can let that go but some things could like say for example and I haven't done anything like this but say for example you had hit some I haven't yeah. but say for example someone had hit somebody yeah. or someone had stolen some, that's going to be really hard to see yeah, yeah. and I, if you're irritated, it I can't I can't meditate if I'm irritated either, you know. Yeah. So I'm quite interested in karma, as in how that helps us with loving kindness to help with the meditation, so we can release away. And I think that might be also when we generate unwholesome karma. Mm -hmm. We're really far away from that, aren't we? Like, so if I went out and say I went out and stabbed someone tomorrow, <laughs> sorry for using violence as a the department of violence so i'm not violent actually it's mm. not my mm. you know luckily that's not the department that's particularly present in me but say for example someone is they're going to be worried about the police they're going to be worried about maybe getting hit by the other person they'll be worried about imprisonment you know all these other thoughts mm. they're not going to be able to meditate so i think helping with um wholesome warm and kindliness for meditation is really helpful so mm. um Maybe also if you can maybe generate some love and kindness, that would be quite nice. <laughs> Stop me on requesting as well. Anyway, so they, they were just some thoughts. <laughs> right, yeah. Actually, the, the Buddha says that the re, we keep um, precepts for the sake of non-remorse. Oh, yeah. You know, it's as simple as that. It's not about going to heaven. You just don't feel bad when you say yeah. that. Yeah. Shirley. Yeah. Shirley, may I ask you to unmute, please? I just wanted to ask a question about forgiveness practice. Right, right. And how this can mm. maybe like the, the lump, be, be, be sort of like diluting the lump of salt. Right. And I was just thinking, um it's oh, just oh it's no, anyway sorry something's just come up on the screen and yes somebody's lowered my hand um 
sorry that distracted me um mm. yes forgiveness um yeah. i think self-forgiveness if one's done something uh unskillful because quite often we beat ourselves up and that's actually creating more you know it's mm -hmm. like a second arrow really mm -hmm. I think. and we, we do tend to do this um so if we can be kind to ourselves mm -hmm. we can you know even if say well, even if we're irritated or have been irritated, we can be kind to that painful feeling mm -hmm. and then sort of take refuge in the kindness rather than the, the you know, mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, we're sort of focusing more on the um, intention to give mm -hmm. kindness to ourselves and our sort of rather tacky mm -hmm. mental states rather than identifying with the states themselves. Wow. So sort of self-forgiveness and self-kindness, mm -hmm. but also, you know, to to others and asking forgiveness to others and I was also thinking about she's sister and my sister used to be quite horrible to me and I was quite I and, and I had a really bad feelings but we get on so well now we can laugh about it mm. <laughs> and I actually think it's a part of, now I know there are you know I mean I don't know what it's like for for other people I think we really loved each other but we were just horrible to each other because we you know that was just sibling rivalry uh and i was just sort of thinking about how you know <laughs> us growing up together as children <laughs> and 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 how that sort of completely gone it's not even there isn't even any necessity for forgiveness it's just uh -huh. sort of it's just sort of gone away because we sort of grew 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 out of it um but yeah i just it just came to my mind as um, as Lee was talking. Uh, forgiveness is this? Can this dilute karma? Bad karma? Do you think, or is it just? Yeah, you know, I don't know. Well, well, the lump of salt simile. It's diluting it in the sense that your mind is so big. So a um, mind that is forgiving is a mind that is expanded, is, is expansive. So in that way, you have diluted that lump of yes, salt. Yes. It's not that you sort of, a balance sheet, you know, minus of this and plus of this. It's... Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And the loving, the loving kindness and bringing, bringing yeah. self-compassion yeah. and compassion to the person who's hurt you. Yeah. Um, that expands the mind as well. It's when yeah. it contracts around it. Right, right. I think that's what you're saying. That yeah, makes, yeah. That's really that's helpful. Good. Thank you. Similes yeah. about. Thank you. Do you talk to your? <laughs> your no, we are perfectly fine now. But you, you know, I, I just personally, I think uh, I feel mm. better not dismissing any bad deeds I did, no matter what age, because there were arahants who were seven. <laughs> You know, so uh, I think also sometimes people say, oh, we're so young, we didn't know better, but actually there were, there's some mm. very pure young people and it would mm. have been nice to be a pure uh, little child mm. as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, maybe, maybe it's not such a big deal, but it's, it's still yeah. nice to not dismiss it too yeah. much, although we're fine right, now, right, but right. just it makes right, me feel right, better right. not... I guess it's how you relate to what you have done in the past. If you yeah. sit there and then feel bad about it, but I shouldn't have done it. Oh my goodness. That doesn't help. So it's how you relate to your past bad actions, not with um, sort of, you know, feeling despair. Yeah. Kedwin. Kedwin, may I ask you to unmute, please? Yes, thank you, Venerable, and everyone who's spoken. It's been yeah. really rich listening. And um, I was thinking that, um, you know, I grew up with a contentious relationship uh, with my mom. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of anger between us. And, um, you know, especially when I was a teenager, and I can think of things that I, you know, ways that I responded to her that were very unkind. Mm -hmm. And um, as an adult... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we carried that into my adult relationship with her. And, but at some point I realized mm. when I'd been practicing for a while 
that it it was not a a, a way that I wanted to have a relationship with her, you know. And so I think I may have said this here before, but I, at one point I didn't have a place to stay and I was staying with her and it was very difficult uh, because of that anger between us, that harshness. And, um, and uh, at, at a certain point I decided, okay, every time I go out of my room, because I mostly stayed in my room, I was very ill. Every time I go out of my room, I'm going to be prepared to be kind, to do a kind thing, no matter what she said to me, no matter what tone of voice she used. And the more harsh she was, the kinder I was going to be. Mm-hmm. And I started practicing that and I wasn't feeling kind. Mm-hmm. I wasn't feeling compassionate, but I acted as if I was, I acted in a kind manner. And um, what I've noticed is that when I act in a harsh manner, like I become angrier and more irritated and it's like the me and my mom or whoever it's like our energy bounces off each other and it escalates you know Mm -hmm. but if i can inject kindness into the situation Mm -hmm. even if i don't feel it like it brings down the volume you know so i would say i'm making tea can i bring you a cup of tea Mm -hmm. or something just a simple thing um, how are you doing today? You know, something just kind. And um, and then the other thing I want to say is that I am so much kinder to myself. Like when I think of things that I've done in the past or things that I may have done just now, you know, and I think, oh, oh, honey, you must have been really feeling a lot of pain to do that. You know, that sort of, I don't say those words, but that's sort of the the spirit of it, you know, like I'm just treating myself like my own honey, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, it's okay. Like it makes sense Mm -hmm. that you would be upset. It's okay. You know, Mm -hmm. because being upset with myself about it is going to just generate more of the same, I think. Wow. Thank you for sharing your story. That's uh, interesting to hear that you know you f- you fake you weren't didn't quite feel kind but you still said the kind thing but somehow over time it worked yeah they say fake it till you make it yeah yeah interesting i I would think that that sort of pretending to be nice would be worse, but actually it's probably better than being outright nasty, but yeah, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing your story. It's always very nice to hear it <laughs> so we have um oh, Upachala, yes. Uh, Upachala, may I ask you to unmute, please? Am I unmuted? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, just just on that kind of fake it till you make it. Um, um, in that sort of context, I think um, there's there's a sort of comic echoing that can happen. Mm-hmm. So if I'm feeling negative then I am putting negativity out there Mm -hmm. and then the other person is potentially feeling that negativity and putting it back towards me and it just kind of bounces back and forth. Mm -hmm. So if I'm able to go into a situation with acting kind, Mm -hmm. even if I'm not feeling kind, then there's the potential of the other person having some kind of kind more gentle reaction Mm. and then that can feed back on me and it can kind of bounce back and echo in that way Mm. so that's maybe potentially what can happen in those kind of situations right 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 yeah interesting yeah yeah maybe it's Faking it, knowing that you're faking it, but doing it anyway. 
I was thinking the same thing. Oh, she said I was thinking the same thing. Because I was thinking about authenticity, right? Yeah. Uh, authenticity is very freeing, you know, when mm. you're honest about your own feelings. I hope you can hear Chi. Okay, we can. <laughs> and, and it's true, but actually, you, you can be honest with yourself. And that's enough. You don't have to actually express your feelings to everybody right, else. Right, 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 right. So you're still being right. authentic because you're acting kind of and you feel like right. doing it because you know, you know what's inside. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gunther? I, I think it's not faking, really. Because isn't it um, true that to change to better, you have first to be aware of it. So by being aware that you someone should try to be kind, yeah, mm -hmm. even if it doesn't mean it, gets the ball rolling. In my opinion, mm -hmm. it's not faking, but the sensational great step was to be aware and to mm -hmm. take some action. And over time, it's training. If you don't want to kick football, you might not kick it. You might kick it to all directions. But if you just kick it, mm. over time, it gets better and better. And mm -hmm. at the end, it will go into the goals. I think that's more yeah. what it is. Mm. Yeah. So you're not a great football <laughs> footballer. <laughs> okay, but not now anymore. <laughs> But uh, you're at least you're you know uh, doing something. Might not go exactly where you want, but you're doing something. Yeah, nice. Yeah, um, Shirley and Shirley, uh, yeah. we ask you to unmute, please. Yeah. Oh, just a minute. It's not letting me unmute. Oh yes, no, I'm, yes, yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think. Uh, I think Benjamin's just put something in the chat yeah, which sort yeah. of really reflects with what I was going to say. It's you actually go out of your way. If I'm feeling sometimes I'm feeling really grumpy and I go for a you know, I go for you know, I go for my walk by the river and I and I'm just feeling grumpy and I just don't really but I smile at people and say hello and mm. and and then they smile back and you feel you feel a bit better but, and it's not it's because you don't want to be in a grumpy state mm -hmm. you, you it is a cultivation of meta because the intention there mm -hmm. it's like i suppose thinking the phrase is made you, you don't always feel anything in the heart mm -hmm. but it sort of it sort of helps helps get you there and if you actually smile at somebody and say hello and oh i like your dog or i like you know and then you get a response from them and then you start feeling you can feel the your heart sort of mm. expand mm -hmm. and when you actually make yourself or you, you you know i am you know i I'm, i think i need a grumpiness certificate from Ajahn Brahm sometimes <laughs> because i am i can be so grumpy <laughs> and <laughs> And but if you if you sort of go out of your way just to sort of think yes I'm going to smile at everybody that I meet and say and mm -hmm. and, and say hi and even if they don't respond I sort of think oh we are a bit of, you know but uh, <laughs> and it does it sort of it 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 sort of grows because you're getting as 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 somebody said earlier you're putting out something positive and. Um, you, you and then you get something back but i really i really admire cadwin for doing that because i mm. think when you're actually doing that with a mm. family member that you've got sort of um history mm. with that is just so difficult mm. so i'm very i'm very inspired and full of admiration for yeah. cadwin being able to do that um mm. with with um with a close family member that you're living with when you're not very well and in a difficult situation I, uh, I I just found that a very inspiring story. So thank you, Ken, yes, for that. Yes. I echo that. I'll just read what um, Benjamin wrote in the chat for those who missed it. But anyway, I don't think it's a fake kindness, although the person may not be feeling in a compassionate mood. The intention behind the kind action is still a worthy one. 
it's not like putting on an act of being kind to fool someone. Nice point. And Upachala says, yes, I agree. It's about the intention. Mm -hmm. For example, if the intention is to deceive, yes. then it's unwholesome. If it is to bring people together, then it's wholesome. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. And quite frankly, you know, we're not exactly, there are just so many other things going on in the mind. You won't have a perfectly pure hello to that person walking the dog. But there is some good and then there's some, you know, bit of irritation somewhere. So it's it's always a mixture anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Liz. Liz, may I ask you to unmute, please? Yeah, now, you know, I, I used to teach psychology, so I, I'm going to put a bit of psychology in there because it is important. And the Buddha say, says, you know, that we can't have two opposing thoughts in the mind at the same time. And that has got very profound uh, implications. And one of these implications is when you say, okay, I'm in a bad mood uh, and so on, but... I I can think now that, that's going to sound a bit strange. Happy thoughts, um, thoughts of meta and so on. Mm -hmm. They will replace yeah. the grumpy thoughts and so on because you can't have both at the same time. And eventually it becomes like a reflex that's cultivation. It becomes like a reflex where the grumpy mood doesn't even arise. Um, because now, now that is not Buddhist, that is neuropsychology, yeah? that the uh, connection between the neurons uh, of grumpiness become weaker and weaker because you don't do it as often, whereas the connection between the neurons of meta becomes stronger and stronger. And uh, it is quite, um, quite, quite interesting to, to see even depressed people. And I've got a friend who, who used to be terribly, terribly depressed. And uh, she, she has used that uh, to, to overcome her depression. She's still taking uh, antidepressants, but uh, not, not, not as much as she used to. And uh, you can see that the weight is lifting she sometimes go back down a bit, but not as as down as she she used to to go. Hmm. Right. Thanks for sharing that. Um, well, we have come up to seven fifty five. So, sorry, yeah, seven fifty five. Um, uh, I will read the last comment before we wrap up. That goes, I have heard Ajahn Amaro from Amaravati once say that sending a card to someone does not mandate that the receiver will be happy about it, but someone will eventually be happy about it. Not knowing how others will react does not need to stop us from sending a greeting card or message of kindness. Yeah, definitely can't guarantee what that person is going to think, that's for sure. But it makes us feel good. <laughs> Okay, so that was a very useful session for me and I hope for others as well. On another just five lines. <laughs> Slowly getting there. Um, yeah, so we've come to the end of the session. Thank you very much, everybody, for contributing. That was very useful. I appreciate it and a lot of food for thought. Um, so we'll wrap up for today. And um, Venerable Chanda it will be back next. She, she's coming back on Sunday. And so you'll see. Well, I, today I'm Venerable Chanda. Whoops, I forgot to change my name. <laughs> um, yeah, from Shirley. Thank you, Venerable, and everyone for a very helpful discussion. I, indeed, it was very helpful. Yes, so we will finish off for today. And Gunther, uh, Gunther will finish yeah. with a little Dharma talk, a little Dharma talk. A small one, I think everybody knows it. Um, yes, yes. Now, um, you, I'm sure you're all aware that uh, Anokampa Mentun do a 
next to real estate with our Anukampa Grove near Oxford. Um, a very nice place. Um, so any dana is highly appreciated. It could be a donation, a monthly donation uh, in a financial form, but there are also things like food dana, hands at, food at the ready and hands at the ready. Um, and you can contact if you want to offer things, um, also manual work and, and other stuff um, by contacting uh, emailing team at uh, anokampaproject.org um, or see on the website. Mm. And uh, yeah, and, and uh, also Ajahn, Ajahn Brahmali's um, tour. Ajahn, Ajahn Brahmali is coming in June. Uh, there are posters uh, on the web page which you can download, I think. Uh, and possibly promote it, um, and of course, hopefully, to be able to come on the talks and a one-day retreat in Oxford. Um, yeah, I think anukampaproject.org has a lot of events now listed, mm -hmm. um, the retreats, our Zoom sessions and everything, so um, definitely worth to look at it, the latest yes. status. Yes. Thank you. Yes, and there's also an online, uh, Ajahn Brahm is teaching online with uh, Venerable Chanda uh, also in June. So you can um, yeah. you can sign up for that too. Okay, so that's it. Thank you, everybody, and see you tomorrow.